Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank uh, the chair, the chairwoman, uh, and I really want to commend you for uh, putting together a bill which, while it reduces the amount of money from the original HEROES Act, in my opinion, because of the lessons we've learned in the last few weeks, improves the HEROES Act uh, because of what we've learned. And I, and, and, I want, and I know that's not an easy task, Madam Chair. I know that is not an easy task of what you've accomplished here today. So I want to congratulate you. But I also want to say in response to, the, uh, to my colleague on the other side from Ohio, this is a serious attempt to put something forward that we believe that the Republicans can support. Now, maybe they're not going to do it today, but I just want to say that our speaker, uh, and when I say our, I mean the speaker, because she is you know, the speaker for the entire House and the entire country, has worked so hard over the last few weeks and months to try to come together with the Republicans she just met yesterday, and maybe even today again, uh, with Mr. Mucher, with, with from the White House. And um, uh, to suggest in any way that this is anything other than a serious attempt by Democrats to put forward something that we think the Republicans can ultimately adopt or come close to what they, could, they would ultimately support, uh, I think is unfortunate, because that's what we're doing here today. I want to go back to what uh, Speaker Pelosi said earlier when she said that what we're really trying to do is crush the virus. And I want to talk about that because much of that language uh, that would accomplish that comes from the Energy and Commerce Committee that I chair. This is the United States of America. I know we're elected from individual districts, but we come here to represent the whole country. The fact of the matter is the only way that we can crush this virus and end this pandemic is if we work together on a national level to accomplish it. And so what we say in the HEROES Act, both the old one and the new one, is that we need a national plan and we need a way to bring forth that national plan. What's happening now is every state competes. I get so mad when I, read, when I, when I watch the TV and they say, oh, Ohio's doing better this week or New Jersey's doing worse this week. That's not what this is about. This has to be a united effort. It's the United States of America. And that's not what we have right now because each state is competing, competing for testing, competing for medical supplies, deciding on an individual basis. The hospitals even compete between themselves. And that's not the way it should be. So what we say in the HEROES Act, and it's carried forth again in this legislation today, is a national plan, someone in charge at a national level, I'll call it a supply czar for the supply chain, that sets parameters, if you will, for how to crush the virus, guidelines for the schools, how you should wear a mask, not necessarily all the details, but essentially a national plan, and then delivers the testing supplies, the medical supplies, and ultimately the vaccine. One of the things that's so, such an, an improvement in this bill is not only do we continue the $75 billion for testing and contact tracing and quarantine, but we also provide another $25 or $6 billion for distribution and development and awareness of the, of the vaccine when it's eventually developed. Because again, this has to be done equitably. It has to be done nationally. And that's what I really want to stress today. I don't necessarily need to use all my time, Madam Chair, because I want to stress that we have to do this together. And that's what this bill puts forward. Now, let me just say, say in addition to that, because I do want to mention a few other things. Uh, we have $2 billion in new funding to get essential workers their protective personnel and work equipment that they need. We also have new provisions to address insurance companies declining to cover COVID testing. In the CARES Act, we said that everyone should be able to get a test for free, no out-of-pocket expense. The bill extends that to the treatment, to the drugs, and the vaccine. But the insurance companies, in many cases, are not doing that. So we want to make it quite clear that they, that they have to cover it free, and there's no out-of-pocket expense. And that would be true for the treatment. That would be true for the vaccination as well. Again, we're one country. I can't stress that enough. Now, the other, the other thing that is a, a major problem, and I want to mention it briefly, is the ability to connect to the Internet. Because the bottom line right now is if you're not in school and you're learning remotely or you're working remotely, you need to have an Internet connection. And there's a lot of inequality with that around the country, too. So the legislation addresses the digital divide by providing $12 billion to schools and libraries for distance learning, for remote learning. We also continue to help low-income households afford internet service 
by having, saying they have to have a discount for service by $50 a month, and we have to continue and enhance the Lifeline program, which helps people of low income pay the bills for those internet connections. And the last thing I want to mention to also is, finally, we also prevent the shutoffs for any kind of utilities, water service and other shutoffs, because that's important as well. So thank you again, Madam Chair, for the time, uh, and I yield back uh, to the speaker.